UFC 301 Pantoja versus Ursek takes place this weekend. And I'm going to go through the full card breakdown and in detail predictions for this pay per view card, if you can call it that. Let's start with the early prelim opener of um, Alessandro Costa versus Kevin Borges. Borjas. Such an annoying name. Because it is Borjas, like if you really look at it, but they pronounce it as Borjas. Borjas is good. He's just mid, though. Like, I don't find him that good. Like, he's got some heat in his hands. Will he knock out Alessandro Costa in round one out cold? Badly? I just don't see that being a case. Joshua Van, he KO- No, he didn't KO Joshua Van. What am I talking about? Van scolded him in round two and three, but he did drop Van off balance in the first, which he won the round based off of. But I think Costa's more skilled. Is he, though? Is he, though? Then again, he beat Steve Versa. He didn't beat Steve Versa. What am I, what am I saying right now? He lost to Steve Versa, 29-28. We'll get to the Earth egg in the main event. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pick uh, Alessandro Costa to get this one done. I think he's just better. I think he's more committed to becoming a world champ. He stepped on short notice to face Earth egg as well. This is now stuff I'm, re- I'm like, looking into. He stepped in on short notice to face Steve Earth egg. He almost won. We'll get to Earth egg in the main event, as I said. But he beat Jimmy Flick, who isn't the best, but beat Malcolm Gordon, I guess. Jimmy Flick recently beat Malcolm Gordon, which was a good win. Um, and before that, he lost to Amir Abazi, which isn't bad. Got KO'd on the feet, though. Short notice bout again. And two of his losses are short notice bouts where he stepped up for the company. And the one he won on full camp was the Jimmy Flick fight. So, And it's two good opponents. Ursaig and Abazi are two top flyweight contenders. Um, I think Ursaig's a top flyweight con- I, I know the rankings don't really say it, but... I think he's at the top level, um, which kind of just leaked my main event prediction there. Um, I'm going to go with Abazi. Loot, no, I'm going to go Alessandro Costa. Got him brain dead. We move on up the card. Ishmael Bonfim versus um, Vince Paquel. See, if you're picking Vince Paquel, you're a bit of a fucking, you're a casual, I think. I think if you're if you're picking Vince Pacquiao to win this with the grappling, you just don't research fights. You're just dumb, and you're just you're just thinking Vince Pacquiao will win. I got Ishmael Bonfim by KO badly in the first round. I think this is probably one of the locks of the card. He did lose to Benoit Saint Denis, but the what reason why he lost to Benoit Saint Denis? The true reason he lost that fight. What was it? Body kicks. Big factor. Big factor. Body kicks were a big factor. That's a big factor, man. Vince Paquel is shit on the feet. Well, one, twos here and there. Ishmael Bonham's going to catch him over the top and lay him out cold. He's got kicks, hard kicks, hard punches as well. Huge knees. I think knees of the body will be a big, big, a big, big factor here. And I think Vince Paquel has good grappling. Against Roosevelt Roberts. Um, who else is he beating? Who the fuck is this girl in this ad? Never mind. Um, Mark Madsen beat him. On the feet. I get that was a bit of a boring fight. Nothing much happened. But if you're going to beat Ishmael Bonfim, you should be able to beat Mark Madsen. Austin Hubbard he beat. Big deal. Austin Hubbard won last weekend, to be fair, but Austin Hubbard isn't that good. I think if you have the right grappling style to beat him, you can beat him. I think that Jim Miller's a good win, but Jim Miller's Jim Miller. Hit and miss sometimes. Don't know what to do with him. I'm not going to pick you to win this. Bomb him. If anything, he's going to be improving on that takedown defense. And it was Benoit St. Nene. Gonna go with Ishmael Bonfim getting the KO here. We move on. Up the card. Um to another fight. Dion Barboza versus Ernesta Karakate. Okay, this is this is the thing what I'm talking about. Um
Dion Barbosa, Ernesto Karakate. I think Ernesto Karakate, I look at both of them at 5'8". They both aren't good in any way. But I think Barbosa is better. I don't even think she's better. Like, I think Kara Kate's just absolutely shit on the feet. That's how bad she is at striking. Um, she's awful. She fights like Deanna Belbita with a high guard. Thinks she's throwing punches with hard, t- uh, with hard uh, impact. She's a loser. She doesn't know how to fight. I can't pick her to win. She's big for the division, though. So that could be something. If she fights another bad opponent, she could lose. She could win, actually. Um, but Dion Barbosa's got good grappling. She isn't the best on the feet herself, but I think she'll. Be, I think she will be able to outgrapple Kara Kate. I just paid her over a decision. Three twenty-seven. Dion Barbosa. She's just better at fighting. I don't even care about her last few opponents. Um, she looked good against Josiane Nunes, Dion. A few years ago. But then she got in flying knee to the chest. Which kind of just took her out of place. And she got TKO'd. Um, but she was actually winning that fight against Josie and Nunes as well. So I'm going to go for Dion Barboza. She's better. We move up the card. Mauricio Ruffy versus Jamie Malarkey. Um, I'm, taking, um, I'm taking Mauricio Ruffy. But Jamie Malarkey... He's such... He's the weirdest fighter in the UFC, looks-wise and record-wise. Um, sorry to shame on you there, Jamie Malarkey. But, um, yeah, this guy's weird. He should be on a three-fight losing streak. I, I don't even know what to say about this guy. Like, he's got a lot of robbery decision wins towards him. And I think they're trying to capitalize on that Australian market. But this guy just sucks, realistically. Like, he beat... We well, lost to Nazra Hakparas KO in the first round. Not surprised. Nazra levels ahead of him. And then he beat John McDessie. He didn't, though. Close fight. I get it. But McDessie won that shit. But again, what do they like more? Canada for McDessie? Or do they like Australia? I think they should have. I know Malarkey's an old guy and they paid him well in his career. But you'd want the Canadian guy to win more than the Australian. You got Whitaker, you got Dan Hooker, you got so many Australian. Volk, who's probably going to get a rematch soon against Ilya. Like, you got so many Australian guys. Steve Herseg, possibly. We'll get there. Um, but uh, I'm going to go with... And then he lost to Naimov. KO'd him as well. He should have... Oh, he beat Prado, though. He did look good against Prado. But again, short notice Prado... Didn't expect grappling from Malarkey. Malarkey completely outgrappled him. I don't think he'll do this to Ruffy. And I think Malarkey, his sick KOs are in the fucking past. Like, Devontae Smith, shit. Kama Worthy, shit. These guys got no chins, by the way. Jalen Turner, good. Not even that good in hindsight now that Moicano just exposed him again. You know, and he beats Michael Johnson. Did you really, though? Very close fight, but Johnson had more of a better knockdown. That was a very close fight by Aline Michael Johnson there. I think Ruffy's better than this guy. I think he'll see the grappling coming. Good BJJ. Powerful. I think he'll put Malarkey out cold in the first. Um, in Brazil. Fought good opponents. Fought a Dagestani guy. I think he'll put away Malarkey. We move on up the card. Joaquim Silva versus Jakar Close. Um, Joaquim Silva gets it done. He rocked Armin Sarukin when Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush couldn't. This guy has more power than Pereira. No, I'm joking. So I'm being for real. Um, yeah, I'd probably Jakar close, but he could lose. Honestly, this is a close one. Because close is a bit chinny at moments. And Joaquim Silva rocked Armin Sarukin. Like, what, like... He put, like, he won round two. Full round two, he won against Sarukian. 1-1 one, one going into round three. Sarukian got it. Thank God. So this guy's actually decent, man. And Jakar Close can be chinny at moments. But I don't like Joaquim Silva's stand-up, man. I don't like this guy's stand-up. Like, it's just, like, so, like you can tell when... You know this guy's just going to get knocked out eventually again. Like, 
Nas Rap put him out. Ricky Glenn put him out. Yeah, I'm not picking him. I'm going with fucking... Yeah, I know it was the pre Grant Dawson Ricky Glenn, but I don't care. Nas Rap put him out. Ricky Glenn put him out. Jesse Ronson shit. Clay Guido was the fight where he should have made a statement. He went to a decision with Guido, 29-28. Unbelievable. I'm not picking him to win. He is good and got power, but other than that, no takedowns, nothing. He just... I know he kind of outstruck Guida, but Guida is just a geriatric, energetic old man at this point. Jakar Close is good. I think if if he doesn't get KO'd, Fluke Lee by Joaquin Silva, he wins, I think. Good striker. I think think he's fixed his composure. Beat Hafa Garcia. Beat Joe Selecki by Slam. And Benil Dariush is not a bad loss, really. I know Dariush people shit on Dariush for losing to Oliveira and Sarukian. To Oliveira and Sarukian. What do you expect, Dariush to go beat those guys and beat Makashev and become the GOAT? Like, you don't shit on Gaethje for losing to Holloway. Like, stupid. Joaquin Silva gets it done. Um, I don't know. I think Close has better wrestling as well. I do think Close has better wrestling as well. So I'm going to pick him to beat Joaquin Silva by KO. If I'm going to trust Close to get the KO on Silva and then Silva to get the KO on Close. We move on up the card. Gene Silva versus William Gomez. Um, I'm picking Gene Silva. Fuck it. I think he'll beat William Gomez by brutal KO. Um, William Gomez sucks. Terrible fighter. Awful fighter. Like, he's got decent... Jesus. He's got decent stand-up. I will give you that. He's got a decent stand-up. But other than that, like... He's got some skill. He trains at MMA Factory. You do seem to get skill from that gym. Uh, for in the stand-up. We look at freaking Cyril Gan, Nasri Namavov. These other guys coming up. Um, and you look at William Gomez up there as well. But Gene Silva's a tank. Keeps winning. I'm going to have to trust Gene Silva. I think he'll get the KO here. And William Gomez. Maybe that was his UFC debut where he looked off against John O'Aaron's. He looks so slow. I think Silva's going to really time with like a bad uppercut or something. And I, I think he'll put him out. Like split decision of Marshall. Really? And Mattis Gomori, he beat by a bullshit stoppage. But was winning that fight fair play. But Yanis Gamori, is he good? We don't really know. So I'm going to lean Gene Silva getting the KO here. As an underdog, I think he is. Yeah, he's a slight favorite. Whatever, he'll win. We move on. Up the co- He's 5'3"? No, he's 5'7". Okay, we move on up the card. Um, Elvis Brenner versus... Elvis Brenner versus Mitibek Golubai. Uh, or Mick Tebek. It should be Mick Tebek. It should be Mick Tebek. Mick Tebek. Mick Tebek. Mick Tebek or by. I'm just going to call him. Uh, he'll beat Elvis Brenner, in my opinion. I, 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 listen, if this was before Oliver Sarukin happened, I probably would have just been even and probably sided someone. Probably Elvis Brenner, to be honest with you. But after watching Oliver versus Sarukian, shootbox guys, those shootbox guys... They don't deal well with heavy wrestlers. Those shootbox Diego Lima people, they they don't they don't deal well with heavy wrestlers. We saw this with Makachev Oliveira, Oliveira Sarukian. Um, there's other examples of this. Elvis Brenner when he fought Garam was losing that fight, but got the KO out of nowhere, delayed reaction shit, Barboza Burgos shit, and he put away Garam. Elvis Brenner. Lost, should have lost to Tugagov. Even though it was a very close fight, should have lost to Igzabai Tugagov. Then beat that Kuyan, Kayan Chuski guy by KO. <coughs> His first actual one sided win he had. Mixed back is a heavy wrestler. Uro Smedic just beat Tim Means last weekend. You know? Tim Means, what am I saying? Uruos managed to beat Tim Means last weekend. Mitovic Orobai survived a storm. I think he'll survive a storm against Brenner. 
And I think he'll out grapple Brenner and put him away. Round two, submission, rear naked choke. I'm going to go with Elvis Brenner. Get a ground and pound TKO probably, or a rear naked choke, I'll say. We move on. And a full cap for him here as well. We move on up the card. Karolina Kovalkiewicz versus Yasmin Lucinda. Um, I like Yasmin Lucinda here. I think she's really good. I think she's really good. You know, we see these Silva, Santos, Brazilian UFC fighters. So many of them. Um, you look at them and you think, uh, just another Brazilian fighter probably won't make it to the top. Probably lose their next fight. Yasmin Lucindo is young. 22 fucking years old. 22 years old. And she's really good. She pulled out of a few fights. She lost to, or she pulled out against Elise Reed. Or both fighters were rebooked. But then she pulled out against Josephine Knudsen. Would have been a really good fight there, in my opinion. Beat Poliana Viana. Beat Brogan Walker. Scold Brogan Walker to a decision. Submitted Poliana Viana. Had a close fight with Yasmin um, Howergui. But she slightly lost that fight. <coughs> I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with her beating Karolina Kovalkiewicz. Who is good, but... Come on, Jessica Penne. Why are you losing to her? Fleet Herrick sucks. Silvana Gomez-Suarez has some power, but she sucks as well. Domopolis sucks. Belbita sucks. Lucindo's good. Best out of all of them there. You know, Jessica Penne beat her. These girls school her on the feet. Like, I think that Yasmin can do it too. And I'm going to trust Yasmin to have the BJJ awareness not to get subbed or out grappled on the ground. We move on. Up the card. Um, Joe Anderson Brito versus Jack Shore. Um... Fuck. I was thinking about this yesterday. I had someone in mind. Uh, fuck. I'm going to go Jack Shore, you guys. I'm going to go Jack Shore. I think she's, I think he's going to do it. Johannesson Brito is very overrated. I was team Brito for a bit, but I don't know. I think he's not that good, to be honest with you. I think Jonathan Pierce was a good win. Couldn't lie. I think of Brito, man, he just he struggles to land heavy shots on someone, is what I've noticed. He couldn't really KO Pierce or drop him, or he couldn't really KO Weston Wilson. Oh no, I think he did put away Wilson, but it was he it was hard to. You know? Lucas Alexander, he subbed in round one. These are mid fighters, by the way. Pierce isn't that good. Probably the best person he's fought, but Weston Wilson sucks. Lucas Alexander sucks. KO Philly. But Andre Feely, he just gets chin sometimes. And I don't understand why. So, we'll see there. Um, he did beat Diego Lopez, but that was controversial. But Bill Algio beat him. Bill Algio beat him. You know, this is where we're going to now. And this, is again, is from Shootbox. Another Shootbox fighter. And he's going up against Jack Shore, who can wrestle heavy. Lost to Ricky Simone by getting dropped. Was looking really good in that fight, though. But got dropped, made his mistake. Beat McQuan Amir Khani, which isn't the best. But Jack George really fucking good. I just, he just hasn't fought in a while. But he's back now. I think he'll go out there and beat Brito. Underdog. Can't you see it happening? Brito, he struggles to land heavy bombs. And he never has a KO. Like, Weston Wilson he beat, but that's a terrible fighter. Jack Shore is really good. And can wrestle heavy. So, you know what I'm going to say? Shore will try grappling with Brito. Brito will try going for, like, some chokes. Um, and I think Shore is going to out-grapple him and really put it on him. And finish him in round three, I'll say. I'll say, and Brito is not that big for the division. I'll say Shore gets it done by finish. Underdog, we move on. Up the card. Um, main card. Paul Craig versus Kyle Baralho. Don't count out Paul Craig. 
Because he's still a weird fighter that can just get this shit. But Kyle Barajo, I think, can get this one done. I think he can. I trust for him to improve his stand-up here for this fight. But I, even that, I think he can just out-wrestle Paul Craig and just be too much for him on the ground. And I, because Brendan Allen really, Brendan Allen's going to become champ. I'm just going to say, uh, no, nah, I'm joking, he won't. But still, the guy, like, he beats people at their own games. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised if he fucking outstruck Sean Strickland at range. Like, I don't even know anymore. But, um, like, watch him chop at Izzy's legs. Um, but Brendan Allen beat Paul Craig and exposed him on the ground. You know, and before that, Paul Craig uh, beat Andre Meniz. Light heavyweight run against Walker beat him as well. Um, what's it called? He fought fucking... What's his name? Who did he fight? Ozdemir. Terrible performance against Ozdemir. But I'm going to pick him to beat Kyle Baralho. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm picking Baralho. I, I trust his power more on the feet. I trust his chin more on the feet. And I trust him to improve more on the feet for this one. And I think he can take it around if he needs to. I'll go first round KO for Braho. Paul Craig tries shooting for an ankle pick. And just gets pounded out like he did against Johnny Walker. So I'm going to go Braho getting it done. Uh, good performances. Look good against Mikal. Alex Achuk. Abbas Magomedov. I think he'll get it done. We move on. Up the card. Mikel Paheya versus Ihor Pateria. Um... Yeah, I'm going to go Ihor Pateria. No, I'm joking. Uh, Mikel Paheya, easy win. He's a savage at middleweight. Savage. Straight up killer at middleweight. I think he'll put away Ihor Pateria in the first round. I just don't think Ihor Pateria is good at all. I really don't. And he did beat that Robert Bryshek guy, who was a fraud in hindsight. But he is good. Uh, he isn't that good, Ihor Pateria. Rodolfo Bellotto beat him. Carlos Olberg finished him. Shogun is past his prime. Of course, he'll beat him. Prime for prime, he would fucking decapitate you. Um, Nicolando Gavriano beat you. Mikel Pajaya gets it done. I'll be shocked if he loses this somehow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he looked great against, um, against Mikhail Alexeychuk. Submitted him around one. Knees to the body. And Andre Petrovsky was a good win. So let's fight Macklin Muradov. I, I, I think we'll get it done here. Uh, by KO in the first. We move on up the card. Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrino. Vitor Petrino, Anthony Smith. Vitor Petrino should get this one done. I think. I think this guy might be a champ as well. I, you might call me crazy. But everyone said it was crazy for Drickus to go up to the division and become a world champ. This guy can definitely do it. Physicality like Drickus. Right? Um, huge power like Drickus. Can walk forward like Drickus. Insane strength for takedowns. We just don't know about Vitor Petrino's cardio and his chin. We don't know about that yet. But I don't think it's going to be answered here against Smith, who, who will get destroyed on the ground, in my opinion. Vitor Petrino is really good. Insane strength. Um... Beat Tyson Pedro. Beat Medeza Sipikowskis. Beat uh, Marci Prachnio. Very good performance there. So we don't know much about his cardio and chin. But everything else is just a check mark. He's good at everywhere. Um, I think he'll get it done. I think he'll beat Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith just beat Khalil Roundtree. Or he lost to Roundtree. Lost to Walker. Lost to Ankalaev. Beat Ryan Spann where he arguably lost. But he won. Whatever. Spann sucks now. He's getting out wrestled and he's gonna lose. Arm triangle choke for Petrino. On the feet though, Smith could win. Just saying. We move on up the car. Jonathan Martinez versus Jose Aldo. Um. Uh, this is weird to predict because I'm gonna go Martinez over Aldo. I am gonna pick Jonathan Martinez to win. This is the thing though. If this was Mar- if this was Aldo, like let's say five months after the Marab fight. I would pick him to beat Martinez by KO. But, and he could get it, still. Stylistically, this is an amazing matchup for him. I just don't like his mindset. 
Jonathan Martinez's mindset is to become a world bantamweight champ and climb up those rankings and put in the work. Because Martinez is not really... He's a, he, he has the personality of a fucking cactus. No offense, Jonathan Martinez, but you do. Um, and you're going to have to put in the work since you're, no, you're not going to have that superstardom fast track like Sean O'Malley. You have to put in the work. Marav has to as well. Corey Sanigan has to as well. But man, he's trying to become a world champ. Jose Aldo, before this fight even, and this is worrying to me, wants to go back to boxing, which is a red flag already, and he wants to be on the undercard of Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. That's a massive red flag. So you know he's just wanting to get this out the way, have his retirement in Rio. I don't think he cares about winning this. Like, I'm sure he wants to win, but, like, I'm sure he's not, like, I'm sure he wouldn't mind losing either. I can't pick him. And plus, he's been out for a while now. I know he lost Marab, but still, he's been out for a while now. <clears throat> Hasn't been training leg kicks. This has probably been, like, a, what, six-week training camp? He hasn't been training leg kicks at all. Like, he's been in boxing matches, you know? Boxing matches against guys like Esteban Espinola, Jeremy Stevens, Emmanuel Zebrano. You think this guy's been training leg kicks? Jonathan Martinez is going to chop at his legs and really make Aldo feel the pain. But I think Aldo will start to... Like, I think round one can be Martinez. Round two is going to be an Aldo round. Maybe he cuts, catches him. I think Martinez will win round three. And I think they're going to have Martinez win a close decision. People say Aldo got robbed again, blah, 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 blah. But I think Martinez can clinch if he needs to. He beat Saeed, beat Adrian Yanez. And um, I think he beat ODB as well. Cub Swanson. That's pretty good, man. Um, he is chinny at moments, so Aldo could do it. I'm not going to bet him to do it, though. I'm going to go Martinez. We move on up the card. Alejandro Pantoja versus Steve Ursag, the main event. Um, why are people so high on Steve Ursag, man? Like, I don't know what he's done to make me say, wow. Matt Schnell was, was a brutal KO. Um, it was an amazing win. But, like, come on, man. Come on. It's Matt Schnell. Pantoja KO'd him as well. You know? Pantoja also KO'd him. You know? Then he goes in there. Um, and he's getting a title shot now. But before that, he fought Alessandro Costa. Alessandro Costa. <laughs> before that, he fought David Dvorak. I'm making an individual prediction for this tomorrow. I don't care. I need to explain why Pantoja will win this. Um, listen, when this fight was made, I was like, you know what? Steve Ursaic has a good chance of winning this. But I looked more into it. Watched, rewatched the Matt Schnell fight. I looked at Matt Schnell fight like, oh, he KO'd Matt Schnell. Was sculling him at range. Matt Schnell was catching him on the feet. On the chin. Like, boom. But Ursaic took it. Ursaic... I don't know if he could say he has a good chin for taking Matt Schnell's shots. Pantoja's, ta- Pantoja's power and speed is so fucking quick. I think he's going to spark Urseg in round one. Not to mention, grappling threat. Urseg, I think he'll have a lot more to worry here. I don't think Pantoja needs to worry about Urseg KOing him. Pantoja has an insane chin. An insane chin. Big head. Can take shots. Um, Ursaic's quick. And he has good placement and accuracy of his shots, I've noticed. Alessandro Costa, 29-28 decision. Lost round one to Alessandro Costa. Made a mistake. Won the last two rounds. I think you guys are too high on this guy. Um, I think Steve Ursaic's good. And I do think he would beat like a Brandon Roy Val. I'm going to be honest with you. But he's not beating Pantoja. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if he did. But I'm not going to pick Urseg to win. 
I don't think Ursa gonna win. Plus, Pantoja was like, give me anyone for Brazil. I don't care who it is. Ursa was like, okay, now we're probably, we're probably gonna look at a top five opponent. Oh, fuck, we're getting a title shot now. Brazil, main event. I think Ursa... I think he's going to lose. I think he's going to lose. Like, I think he'll get dropped in the first round. Round two. Actually, I don't, what am I, what am I going to say for Pantoja? Because he just put him away in the first. You know what? I'm going to say early stoppage. People complain. I'll see Pantoja drops him bad. Lands big shots on top. Ursig tries going for like some triangle. Pantoja shakes him off. Lands big shots. And people say it's a bit of an early stoppage. But no, it's not an early stoppage. It's going to be a good stoppage. I'll go round one TKO for Pantoja. People forget who the fucking champ is. This guy beat El Cap. Brandon Moreno twice. Also beat Brandon Royval twice. He's clearing out the division. It's killing the division at the same time. But he's clearing out the division. This guy should move up soon. Get this win and then fight the winner of Makaya of Royval. Then move up to fight Sean O'Malley. I wouldn't mind that, to be honest with you. Wouldn't mind that. This guy's fucking good. And Steve Ersag has to worry about the grappling threat. I don't think Pantoja has to worry about that. What does Pantoja need to worry about? What does he need to worry about? Really? Not KO, not getting KO. Don't see that. Him worrying about that. Not worrying about getting taken down. Um, what? Getting out popped at range? When Ursaic has to worry about takedowns, submissions. I don't think Pantoja has to worry about submissions either. Um, he has to worry about cardio, Ursaic, first five rounder. Pantoja, then five rounds twice. Gassed out against Roy Val. Roy Val trains at Elevation top team. Um, I don't really worry about that. And he was dominating Roy Val as well. Dominated that fight, 49 46. Um, he went five rounds twice, hard. You know, hard against Moreno. Showed good cardio there. Ursa has to worry about getting KO'd, flatlined. He has to worry about submissions. He has to worry about takedowns. Has to worry about his own cardio, because he's never been five rounds. Leg kicks from Pantoja are key here as well. I'm taking Pantoja, guys. I'm taking Alejandro Pantoja. I know it's a shit card and people are just bored. Of just taking Pantoja. And they need to make something to have it fun. So they're just taking Ursaig. He's not winning. There's no way. I just don't see it. Um, it's Pantoja. Cap failed to beat him. And a lot of people failed to beat him. Askarov was a robbery decision. Figueredo beat him. In 2019. And it was a close war. Where he just got dropped. And Figueredo's power is way, high, way higher than fucking Ursaig's. Don't think Ursaig wins, but it'd be funny if he fucking did, but he ain't winning. Like, subscribe, thank you for watching. Peace.